Hi guys, we are doing kitchen makeover part two. This is technically not renter friendly, so we're not calling it renter friendly, but this is for you if you are making over your kitchen and you want to do it on a budget, affordable, but still have a really powerful transformation. Keep watching, or you know, if you guys just like kitchen makeovers, keep watching. <laughs> if you guys missed part one, I will have a link down below up in the cards. If you are new here, I am Emily. I am a mom who loves home decor thrifting and a good DIY project. Project. But here is how the kitchen is looking. To quickly recap part one, we basically transformed our cabinets with a really, really simple hack of adding trim to all of the cabinet fronts because our cabinets were just flat. We also gave them a fresh coat of paint. They were previously painted white, which was not bad, but we just wanted to paint them kind of like a grayy beige. We painted the cabinets and we also put contact paper on the countertops. So let's get started with part two of this makeover. We have these uppers that we did not touch. Now our landlord agreed and was okay with us. Basically, we are removing half of our upper cabinet. Well, we did it. We got off all the cabinets that we wanted to. I don't know when this home was built, but everything in this house is flathead screws and it is a nightmare to try and take them out. Now we're on to the next part of this project. Whew. The cabinets are down. I was so anxious about this process. Like, are we gonna be able to do it? Are we gonna destroy the wall? Like, what is gonna happen? My husband was very confident. Like, I thought it was gonna be just like this huge thing and it honestly just like flew by and it was like, wow, they're down, it's done, okay. Now that the cabinets are down, we decided to take off all of the tile on that wall. So the tile is coming off. Another thing we did, which I don't think we filmed because we did it a little later, also decided to take the tile off of the wall by the door opening, but just on the one side. We're not really touching the other half of the kitchen we are gonna do the uppers blah, 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 blah. that's a whole other <laughs> that's a whole other thing we're gonna finish all the trim on those cabinets and stuff but we're not really touching that area we're kind of just focused on this one side of our kitchen The tile's all off now. It's old, old tile, so this came off pretty easy. All you really need for tile is a pry bar and a hammer. There's some people who like to hit the tile and crack it before they pry it off, but I find that if you do that, you risk 
damaging the drywall, which some of it came off here, but if we had hit it, you could like puncture the drywall and then you have a full patch on your hand. So that's why we did not do that. The tile came off really easily and I actually got to take off some of the tile and that was my first time doing that. It was fairly enjoyable. My husband was really confident. He has done this stuff as a job for the past couple years. I mean, not demoing, but he's just been in the construction world. So he is not intimidated by these projects. Taking the tile off was a very quick process. That did not take long. What was a little bit more tedious is that, you know, we want to do a really good job on this house, treat it like it's our own and really take care of it. So we wanted to really clean up this wall. We do have a plan for the back of this wall, but we needed to smooth it all out. He basically chiseled off all the glue that was on the tile so that the wall could be flat to put our shiplap up, which we're getting to. The tile is off, the glue has been chiseled, the wall is flat. Now, if we were leaving this just the regular wall, we would definitely patch it and paint it, but we are putting up shiplap beadboard. Now, shiplap beadboard is what we put in our dining room which is just over here. I have a whole dining room makeover. And so if you guys wanna see the dining room makeover where I put up the shiplap, I can link that down below for you. We had used this shiplap beadboard before and we actually had a whole piece left over. I was like, let's use this shiplap. And we only needed to buy one more shiplap board. So, so far, all of our work has cost us $0 for part two of this kitchen reno. It's all just been demo. And the first cost was this $36 shiplap beadboard because we had some extra. It is finally time to install this shiplap beadboard. all of your nail holes. We use a brad nailer to install them and of course a little bit of glue as well. Got to go in afterwards, fill all your holes, let them dry, sand them down, and then you're also going to caulk. I hate that word. We're going to call it, we're not going to use the word caulk throughout this video or caulk, which is, who, who says that? Anyways, we're going to call it dat because DAP, I think, is the brand name. So we're gonna say DAP because I'm not saying that like 10,000 times. To really make this wall look good, you're gonna use some DAP and basically fill all of any spot that needs it, any seam, anything where they connect and it's not looking good. Of course, paint really helps too. Once you paint over like the lines where they meet, the line just disappears and it looks so good. DAP is the hero of the kitchen. <laughs> Anything that like doesn't look good, you're just gonna use some dap and it's like, ah. Yeah, obviously we had to like dap the window and like all the stuff to make everything look seamless. We also added a piece of trim to the top of our shiplap to really finish it out. We didn't have to do this in the dining room because our wall has like a lip. So it just went under the lip and looks perfect. But in the kitchen, we wanted to add this piece of trim at the top to make it look really clean and good. And it definitely was like that finishing touch we needed. And we went and painted the entire wall all white, which adds a nice contrast to the cupboards and things like that since they're kind of like that gray color. building some shelves. Now we had this one great piece of wood my husband got in the 70% off lumber section at Home Depot. And then he also had to buy one or two other pieces just so that everything matched. But I don't think he spent a lot, maybe like max 40 bucks. I think he spent less than that. I have to ask him. He'll probably put it on the screen. <laughs> but so far, those are our two main costs other than buying the wall filler stuff, which we can put on the screen how much that costs and then buying DAP 
as well. Those are pretty much our only costs for this whole kitchen. It is time to build our shelves. The shiplap is like 90% done. There's a few touch up paint things we need to finish off, but Stefan is going to get started on making our shelves. And I really am wanting shaker style farmhouse shelves. The bottom shelf is gonna have like a peg rack and yeah. So basically we're gonna have two big shelves here. One of the really great things about this is that I know usually shelving doesn't give more storage, but in our situation, we had the one cabinet and they extended this countertop because of this dishwasher. This used to not be here. At some point in this house's history, they made this countertop longer to actually have a dishwasher. You guys saw that there was just the cabinet and then emptiness and there wasn't even tile over there. So it was a little bit kind of like that didn't belong. Now we're gonna have two shelves that extend the length of the countertop. Don't eat our template, Myla. I just made this little template as our shelf brackets. Save us some money. Stefan's just going to be cutting these from wood. I did search the internet and shelf brackets are pretty expensive. So he's gonna be making the whole thing. I made a template for him out of a pizza box. <laughs> and uh, so anyways, let's go make these shelves. Got our shelf, we're, it's not screwed in. We're just seeing how it looks. I think it looks really good. And we'll have two. The shelves are built. I'm very excited. We did try to prime them as much as possible and paint them too off the wall. And we do need to fix any paint stuff when they're on the wall as well. But I am so excited to get these pegs into my shelves. The peg shelf is what I have dreamed of. I'm so excited to be having a peg shelf in my kitchen. I don't know why, but I got these pegs off of Amazon. I can link them down below. Basically, you just screw them in. They're super simple. My husband did the measurements so that they all look perfect. I'm sometimes like, it looks good. And he's like, no, we need to sand that back down and then we need to paint it again. And so anyways, we probably did that like three or four times with certain spots on these shelves until they are perfect. And let me tell you, they look so good. And of course it is worth it to do it right the first time. Put that extra work in so your projects look perfect and you will not regret it. It's time to get these shelves up on our wall. It's time to hang our light. I am so excited to get this light up. We got this one off of Home Depot. Honestly, I was looking for like the most affordable and cute light because this is one of those things that we can't take with us. Obviously we need to replace the light situation. So um, yeah, I think this was $30. So really happy with it. Everything that's 
left is kind of just tedious stuff. We need to finish painting out our kitchen cabinet, finish painting out some of our window trim, and then we also have to deal with this wall that we took the tile off of. For this wall, we needed to patch it so that it literally was gonna look like a perfect wall, so I patched the heck out of this thing. <laughs> this is my first time really doing that other than like, you know, nail holes in an apartment. And basically we might have patched this thing like five times. So the first time was like the biggest. Then the second time, you know, each time you're seeing any imperfection. The first time you're getting all the big holes. Second time, maybe other little big things until it looks good. <laughs> That wall was one of those things that was just like, eh, not like a fun project, but we wanted to make it look really good. And that actually now is more smooth than the rest of the wall. The rest of the wall has like a bunch of imperfections. So anyways, we filled that whole wall, made it look like there was never tile there. That's all done. We painted the cabinet up top where the, you know, overhang met that needed fixed and we had patched it and all that stuff all the little tedious jobs that aren't the fun part done <laughs> well, what a relief it's finally time to style up my kitchen I have these moments where I am extremely aware of the absolute privilege and blessing it is to do what I do and get my literal dream set of dishes gifted to me and I just want to say that that privilege and blessing is not lost on me. I feel really thankful and grateful and that wouldn't happen without you guys watching my videos. I am so excited to be partnering with Fable. You guys don't know they make dishware, flatware, glassware. They are literally the most incredible company. Each of these bowls and every plate, everything is handcrafted by artisans in Portugal. They're such an amazing company. Every day they are dedicated to becoming a zero waste company. They just really believe in sustainability and I love being able to partner with them. And to top it off, they have the most gorgeous dishware. I am literally in awe of these plates. Each plate is unique so they're not like perfectly the same which i absolutely love i think it just gives this natural look to these plates and dishes and truly i am blown away <laughs> they are so beautiful and they gave me a code for you guys you can get 10 percent off using emily faith 10 off it is time for the best part of this video we are going to style up my shelves and style up this kitchen and get ready for this final reveal Everything is styled and in place. Do you guys remember how this kitchen looked before? And here it is now.
Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm in love. I'm in love. It's so good. I just want to say that I have zero regret making over this kitchen. I know this is not our forever kitchen. This is a rental. Hopefully it can bless our landlord and any future tenant that lives here. And you know what, while we live here, I'm just so happy to have this as my kitchen. Sometimes it's like life's too short to wait until we can buy a house, reno a kitchen. I don't know when that will really happen, but since we had the opportunity here and I get to live with a bit of my dream kitchen for this time in my life, I have no regrets. I love that I got to do this and it was really a joy for me and my husband to do. I hope that this gives you guys some inspiration if you're making over your kitchen on a budget. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. As always, you can subscribe. For more of my everyday life, follow me on Instagram at emilyfaith22. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.